On November 4, 2010, Qantas Flight 32 and Airbus A380 experienced a catastrophic engine failure just minutes after takeoff from Singapore. What followed was one of the most challenging emergencies in modern aviation history. But thanks to an experienced team of five crew members in the cockpit, this flight ended in survival, not tragedy. Yet, the ordeal was far from over as one more life-threatening challenge awaited them after touchdown. Qantas Flight 32 was scheduled to fly from London via Singapore's Changi Airport to Sydney, Australia. This was a routine international flight operated by Qantas, Australia's largest airline. The aircraft, an Airbus A380-842 with the registration VHOQA, was powered by four Rolls-Royce Trent 900 engines and carried 440 passengers and 29 crew members. On this particular flight, there were five crew members in the cockpit, a decision that would prove crucial once things took a dangerous turn. Leading the team that day was Captain Richard de Crespigny, an experienced pilot with extensive training on the Airbus A380. In addition to the normal crew of pilot-in-command and co-pilot, there was a relief pilot and two additional check captains and were undergoing standard checks and observations as part of Qantas's ongoing training program for its pilots. Qantas Flight 32 took off from Singapore's Changi Airport at 9.56 a.m. local time. The climb was smooth and the aircraft was expected to reach cruising altitude without any issues. But just four minutes after takeoff, at an altitude of approximately 7,000 feet, the number two engine suffered a catastrophic failure while en route over Batam Island, Indonesia. The engine failure wasn't just a routine malfunction. It was an uncontained engine explosion. Inside the number two engine, a turbine disc broke apart violently sending shrapnel tearing into the wing and triggering a cascade of failures across the aircraft's systems. But what caused this disc to shatter? As we'll discover later, even a seemingly minor flaw can lead to catastrophic consequences. Within moments, the explosion triggered numerous separate warnings in the cockpit. The electronic centralized aircraft monitoring ECAM system showed multiple failures including damage to one hydraulic and electrical systems. As the aircraft remained controllable, it was decided that the best option would be to hold the present altitude while they process the ECAM messages and associated procedures. The crew transmitted a PAN message to Singapore Air Traffic Control and informed them they needed 30 minutes to assess the status of the aircraft. ATC directed the aircraft to a holding area to the east of the airport to position the A380 within gliding range as requested by the captain. The engine warning display indicated that the number two engine had changed to a failed mode. Number one and four engines had reverted to a degraded mode and that number three engine was operating in an alternate mode. The second officer on board in the cockpit went into the cabin to visually assess the damage. His attention was also brought to the vertical fin-mounted camera on the in-flight entertainment system displaying a fuel tank leak from the left wing. The crew elected not to initiate further fuel transfer as they were unsure of the integrity of the fuel system. And in addition, they could not dump fuel due to damage to the fuel management system. Captain de Crespigny and his team maintained focus, checking and rechecking systems while carefully monitoring the fuel levels and the aircraft's performance. After about 50 minutes to complete all the initial procedures associated to the ECAM messages, the crew began preparing the aircraft for an emergency landing. With assistance from the Landing Performance Application, LPA, the crew calculated the distance needed to land and set the aircraft on a long, precise glide path toward Changi's runway 20C. Due to the extent of the damage, they anticipated a difficult landing, and the approach to the runway would need to be highly controlled, as they had limited hydraulic assistance and reduced braking power. They had one shot to make the landing safe, as further issues could arise if they attempted a go-around. At 11.45 a.m., Qantas Flight 32 touched down at Singapore's Changi Airport. The landing was hard due to the increased weight and reduced control, but the crew managed to bring the aircraft to a stop approximately 150 meters from the runway's end. Despite all engines being shut down upon landing, the number one engine continued to run due to damage in its control circuits. 
This created additional risk, with fuel still leaking from the left wing near to the left landing gear, which was extremely hot from braking. Before disembarking, the emergency services had to lay fire retardant foam over the leaking fuel. Passengers started disembarking about 50 minutes after touchdown. The number one engine was reported to have been shut down about three hours after the aircraft landed. Following the incident, the Australian Transport Safety Bureau, ATSB, conducted an investigation into the cause of the engine failure. The findings showed that a manufacturing defect in an oil feed pipe caused a fatigue crack that caused an oil leak, which eventually led to an oil fire in the engine. The fire led to a turbine disc overheating and disintegrated. Rolls-Royce later implemented changes to prevent similar failures in other Trent 900 engines. What would you have done in the cockpit that day? Could you have made the split-second decisions needed to save 469 lives? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this story gripping, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Ghosts of the Sky for more deep dives into aviation's most unforgettable moments. Hit the bell so you don't miss our next video, because there are even more mysteries waiting to take flight. Thanks for watching.